question is that, uh, as I understand, it was a kind of short adaptation. Uh, it was based on a sh short uh, novel and you somehow adopted this into the film. Yeah. I'm wondering if you can uh, explain a little bit about the process, uh, yeah. what part of the novel you um, preserve or what kind of, what you added. Oh, sorry. Um, well, uh, for people who are not familiar with this, uh, uh, John Ivy Lindquist, who's the, um, the writer of the novel, he uh, become prem became prominent uh, prominent in <coughs> sorry I'm losing my voice in uh, in Sweden and Scandinavia when he did a, a book called Let the Right One In, which which has been adapted to into a movie, a Swedish one and an American one, and and that was that started the whole uh, wave of this like in uh, nordic uh, magical realism and uh, genre cross stuff and uh, and i think I, I saw the movie at the time it came in uh, at, it came out and and i think it was great and amazing also uh, at the time <laughs> swedish commercial cinema was completely like you know in coma you know nothing really happened yeah uh, and then uh, a couple of years later, I had a chance to you know work with him and you know adapt some of his stuff. And and this was a novel had I've been hearing about, and and nobody wanted to make it because it it's it's the it's not the most straightforward uh, novel to to you know adapt into movies. It it's like a lot of it is in diary form, so it it's in characters made and her thoughts and which, which okay. like works as a literary device but doesn't necessarily as as a cinematic device. So we uh, we started working on it, me and John the writer, and uh, at some point it, we felt that you know it has to be. The universe has to be expanded from the novel, which was like it's it's a fairly short novel, it's like 30, 40 pages. So uh, you know, I got like uh, John's blessing to to get on with it, and then uh, uh, I and Isabella Eklöf, my fellow film director and and, and scriptwriter, we worked on this couple of years. So yeah. And there are some interesting scenes in the film, for example, uh, the food scene. Uh, you just said? Yes, I just said. Okay. <laughs> the food scene, or for example, the steak scene, uh, or for example, the costume design. I'm just curious if these scenes were explained in the novel, or is it uh, your um, base? Uh, how did you try, or for example, things about the life of somebody, like an abnormal character? Yeah, I think the sex scene was uh, quite different in the novel. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, it was it was much more polite and yeah. civilized, and I think one of the first uh, reactions I had when I wrote the, uh, uh, read the novel was that uh, I mean if if they're not humans or whatever and if they're the kind of uh, characters they are, then they're you know if they really want to fuck they they do it doesn't look like this you know it doesn't look like that would be me and my girlfriend or even like when we're like fifty you know okay. so. It has to have some kind of grit or rawness to it, and then we start working on it, of course. Uh, so no, then there are some other stuff as uh, you know the the. Um, I think the the. Um, I don't think the food like the the, the scene yeah, where they eat worms. It wasn't in the the short story either, I think. But then there were some some other stuff that we kind of like expanded, you know. Like the, this whole thing with the he see <clears throat> this like creature that comes out of him and you know it was there and the whole setup was there and I, I and I thought okay when he's talking about it and giving birth and it's such a central thing in the movie we should see him give birth as well you know we should we should see this guy give birth and everybody was laughing and say okay it's gonna be like you know absurd and comical and I was like doesn't matter you know it's it's uh, it's his nature or, or uh, this person's nature you know so we have to see it as we have, if it was a woman or an animal or whatever so you know that worked kind of like back and forth sometimes as well okay and uh, about the custom design and uh, mm. because um, I also like about the makeup uh, was there a CGA involved or um, the... well I think the make like you mean the special effects yeah, makeup um, <clears throat> It was uh, mostly up to I don't know ninety something percent is in camera, okay. and then they we did some retouching some at some points some places that you know it's like we we uh, like, you know did 
if there was like some lines or stuff uh, we remove but it's not really that much you know mm. so it is uh, I'm, I think uh, Jöran uh, Lindström who uh, designed the mask and also Pamela Goldenmeier and Pierre and Olga and all the other people who were in the, the makeup uh, department they're like wor world class uh, makeup artists and they've, they've been working on I don't know Harry Potter and oh, okay. uh, uh, you know everything so so they were I think the idea was that uh, what what I what I asked for was that um, I don't want to make a movie where I have to mind rain and temperature and all those and the light I don't want to be free I, I don't want I don't want to think about it I don't want anybody else to think about it either and if they don't the mask don't work that way then I don't want to do masks okay so that was the deal from the beginning, and and they delivered actually. Okay, and um, I, uh, if I'm compare this with, with your first film, Shirley. Yeah. Uh, I was Shirley at Berlin, and Shirley was kind of also a horror film. And it was also yeah. about the child and the yeah. uh, child. <laughs> it was a kind because of. It has a kind of monster. Mo child has kind of monster character. Yeah. Is it something that you are interested in the character of a child? Because yeah, maybe I got maybe because I got a child myself. <laughs> so oh. It's, uh, I don't know, it, I, I think, uh, I think it's, it's really, uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence, I, I, I can't really tell, I mean, I can't psychoanalyze myself, okay. might be something there about something with me, don't want to have a child, but I still have, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, the similarities between uh, Grenz, Border, and uh, Shelley, they're, they're, uh, pretty coincidental because at the time I was you know planning to do Shelley I knew a little bit I was going to do something but I didn't know so so there's not I didn't uh, <clears throat> sorry I didn't try to follow like a conscious team of team of um, you know evil children but I might do a third one just to make just just for the hell of it Buddha. Yeah, I yeah. told the, the women that he doesn't care about the abuse and if what happened to him, for example, yeah. in the past. But all the movies based on the questions of abuse and the revenge. Yeah. So I'm just curious how you can. Well, I mean, I think the what is what is implying is that you know he's stronger that he's not a human being. Mm -hmm. So those things like abuse is abuse in human beings' world. As you know, it's like when he's like you know all the stuff he's doing with the with the children. It's, it's also like something he does in 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 his in his mind. It's okay because you know it's it's a human thing, and he doesn't care about human things. You know, so that is the same with abuse. You know, but yeah, it's uh, the whole. It's a, like a, a red line of abuse is going through this, but you know, it's uh, yeah. Everybody has his own pain. You know. Try to work the, with your actor. How yeah. did you try to, for example, tell them to behave in the way that you think that feels the, the character that you want? Well, you know, uh, Eva and Aero, they're, they're excellent uh, technical actors uh, and excellent character actors. Uh, and you know, it's like the way I do work with with uh, my actors in, in in my movies is I'm not a very technical director. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't have any special regime of doing this and that and preparing this and that. You know, I do it very like instinctively most of the time, and that's why it's really important uh, who I choose. I, I I use a lot of time and effort for casting, okay. and when I choose that person, I think like you know, I can do I can do people better than they are. What I can do is I can be a kind of a personal trainer, you know. I can tell you, like, if you do like 20 more push-ups and you know, it's like you run this and that, and that would that might help, you know. And I would do the same on set, you know. It's like I wouldn't. I would start. My starting point would be that I chose these people, and I wrote a script, and already there, you know, a lot of character and and the action should be there. And they would come up with something, and and you know we we use we don't do like uh, rehearsals or something. You know we, we do a first take as the first thing we turn on camera and, and do a first take, and 
from there I say okay so this is how you guys see it fine I see it like this too but you know with certain adjustments so that would be my way of working with actors